What's up YouTube? Uh, back again with another video, but this time I'm going to talk about my current crypto portfolio. Today is January the 4th and of 2022. Crypto is in a way different place than even a year ago, and especially like 5, 3, 10 years ago. Um, and it's something where I've been putting a lot of my money into. And I just kind of wanted to document my journey with it because I feel like every time I've documented things in the past, I've just kind of learned a lot from that experience and I've also met a lot of really cool people along the way. All right, so going forward, uh, I'm going to try and make some videos like in batches, probably like once a week or so, talking about different things, just showing like what I have. But, you know, in terms of like my current crypto portfolio that we're going to go over today, it's still the same holdings that like I put here in my Discord group on 11.26.1. I haven't really bought into too many new tokens. I've just been trying to compound current positions and then actually I'm trying to reduce the amount of tokens I have, right? So as you can see, there's over like 30 coins that I hold on here. Relatively, when I see other, I guess you say like crypto or influencers in a space, they tend to have like maybe less than 10 positions of what they're holding and they have convictions in those positions, uh, which I find pretty interesting, right? So all of these are not like really big holdings. Some are bigger than others, but we'll get into that. But first things first, just quick disclaimer, like when it comes into crypto um, and what I'm currently doing and, you know, hypothetically, you know, all this is not financial advice, but for my situation, right, I'm personally maxing out my 401ks, the IRAs and all that before putting money in crypto, right? That's like tax-free money, but all you kind of can't touch it till you're 65 but either way it grows like tax-free so like why not if you're like a u.s resident all my debt that's over four percent is paid off i don't have any consumer debt i only have business debt i've never had credit card debt so i've never been a crazy spender with all that and more recently i just paid off my student loans just because to release the mental stress of that so you know, these are two things, areas that I highly recommend you kind of like have taken care of before or even like thinking about crypto. And then uh, in terms of safety, if you're doing anywhere in terms of large amounts of numbers, like any amount, if you like invest $10,000 and you'd cry tomorrow if you like lost it all uh, in a hack, I highly, highly recommend a hardware wallet. I use a Trezor. Ledger is another one you can look at. And with my portfolio, right, what I'm trying to do is turn my six figure portfolio of seven figures. And I really like going for cash flow tokens, like tokens that generate revenue, right? And I like to use tokens that I can use in DeFi that have like a farming aspect to it. Tokens that I can put to work, right? So an example, of one that is not a cash flow token would be something like, um, like Dogecoin. It doesn't do anything. You can't stake it anywhere. The only way you make money on it is if the price goes up, right? And you sell at a higher thing. With certain tokens that I'm about to tell you about, you can put money in, you can put it in different farms, and it'll compound and make you money, right? It'll generate revenue for you, right? It's similar thinking to what like dividends could be. And if you don't know what any of this is, uh, it took me like maybe like six months to really get my head wrapped around everything in like the current crypto landscape, DeFi. Uh, but if you stick with it and you keep doing your research and jumping down different rabbit holes, uh, you're gonna learn. So let's get into uh, what I'm holding, which ones I'm holding a little bit more, and the ones that I think you should pay attention to right now in the current cycle. So in terms of like my bigger holdings, I would say it's gonna be FTM. That's gonna be one of my biggest holdings. I farm it with two, right? So I'm gonna make a more in-depth video about these, but I just wanted to give a general summary of like what my bigger holdings were. FTM, Tomb, uh, I would say ETH uh, and BTC, I have like a stack, but it's not as big as it used to be. In terms of Bitcoin, I think there's a lot of sediment that's starting in the crypto space that's starting to call it like a boomer coin because it doesn't have as much utility uh, compared to everything else that's coming in, out in a space. It's becoming a store value type of coin, which is still good. Um, and I still hold it, but I, I recently in the past year sold more of it uh to just invest in other things all right uh spell is one of my bigger holdings ice is one of my bigger holdings these are part of the danny project so uh spell ice and time so danny is like a big influencer in the space i'm probably going to make a video about his projects 
in particular because he's like right now he's like a big influential like crypto influencer in space that's also a builder right and if there's one thing i learned about like marketing um you know running my SaaS companies seeing other people build things over the years you know seeing people like elon steve jobs build things is like if you can be a face of something um and really push it uh you know there's a lot more power to that than some of these coins that don't have um public teams right um and that's another thing you'll see in the crypto space some of these projects the founders are anonymous which is pretty crazy and <laughs> maybe a, a, probably a year ago my rationale was I was like, I would never invest in anything that has a non-public founder. But as I got more into the crypto space and I learned which projects have more legit teams that are collaborating with more legit teams that are like not public, I've learned to build more trust in them. And, I, and now like, I don't think the anonymous founder uh, developer thing is such a bad idea just because of all of the regulations and governments that could possibly come after you. So I understand why they say anonymous. Link is one of my bigger long-term holdings too. I'm, this is one of the coins that I dollar cost average into forever. And same thing with ETH, right? So in Coinbase Pro, every week, I believe, I'm just like buying more and more and more and more. I think these are like the safer long-term plays. Link, I got in like very, very early. So like my cost basis is super, super low. But Link is like one of those things where it's like a long-term play. <laughs> um, the more you read into it, the more potentially like crazy it sounds where it can connect like a whole bunch of things off the internet to on the internet to the crypto space and if it really does work in theory it should be like a widely used product and it should make the token price go up but token price for this hasn't been really good kilma uh this has been kilma and swid recently i invested into a few months ago these have been like my worst performers unfortunately Kilma is basically an own fork that basically is trying to reduce or I guess eat up a bunch of carbon, I guess what tokens or whatever, whatever a carbon credit, right? And that's what they're focused on, which is an interesting spin. Swid is another own fork that's just basically building a bunch of, uh, its goal is to gather a bunch of Ethereum. Um, so it's kind of like another hedge on Ethereum, but they put the Ethereum in their treasury work, which I do like. Jice and Blizz are two that I got in because of uh, Noah Seedman. Uh, this guy's a pretty uh, influential guy, in my opinion, in the crypto space. I really like his um, YouTube videos um, and the way he talks about things in the crypto space. He He's like a boomer, right? Older guy. But he talks about finance in a way that's more uh, thoughtful and traditional. Um, but applies it to the crypto space. So if you guys get the chance, follow this guy, watch his YouTube videos, um, and you'll see why Like I did go into Jice and Blizz, their revenue plays. Spa hasn't been that good to me. Another own fork. I am not adding anything more into this position. I'm just letting it ride out. LQDR, uh, this has one, been one of my better plays recently. In the Phantom ecosystem, this one, basically everything in the phantom ecosystem as of this week is like popping off and it should be popping off for like the next i would say like two weeks because there's some news coming out with andre and danny and they're like two big like influencers like in the space and i would highly recommend you guys follow them too i'll uh, just pull them up so you guys can see who they are all right yeah so the two guys um andre and daniel are they're basically building a bunch of stuff in a space. Andre is like a DeFi legend. And you can say he's like one of the godfathers of DeFi and crypto in general. So he's a popular influencer in the space. And I like most of his projects. Um, same thing with Danny, but never before have I seen like really two big public influencers in the space say they're gonna build something. Um, so I think there's something coming really cool in the next two weeks. So we'll see how that uh, goes. Um, it's causing everything in the Phantom ecosystem um, to pump, right? Fort hasn't been a good play for me this year. Basically, Fort is one of those projects where it's another own fork. Um, but I know one of the lead developers on it, um, Ave. So I just put like, I think I threw like a thousand bucks at it just to see what would happen. But right now, every single own fork is getting crushed. And that's a part of it too. MCC, CCC, uh, these are interesting projects along with SEC. They're the same uh, concept. 
But basically what they do is they are building up a treasury and they put your money into different farming protocols for you and they just charge a fee to like kind of manage it. It was it would kind of be like getting a, a personal finance person, what is it? A financial advisor and getting them to like pick your stock investments and like you know, choose what dividend they want to collect and where we invest it. And that's what those products are doing. It could be good. But MCC unfortunately like I didn't do the migration in time. Uh, which really sucks. So that means my tokens like are useless right now, which is really annoying. I hate how projects do that. Anything you invest in, you should really pay attention to at least once a week because sometimes they change their smart contract systems and it's really annoying because you just lose money because you forgot to migrate your tokens to version three. And that's what happened with this one. CCC is, uh, so this one's on Ethereum, CCC is on AVAX, and this one's on Phantom. This one has been good at me. CCC is like catching up. I would say with the rest of these, wool, I have like a small bag. I think it's less than like 5,000. Chess, less than 5,000 too. I had a lot during a recent spike. But these, I'm not as interested in anymore. This one, a little bit Luxo. So they're basically like an NFT play around digital identity. One of the founders of Luxo is a guy uh, that was one of the founders of Ethereum. So that's why I bet on this, and that's why I also bet on DOT. I'm early into both. I invested into these like early, like about a year ago. So, and then you guys know, um, because they're all related to all these own forks. I'm probably gonna make another video where like, and write it down where like my biggest to like lowest holdings are. Uh, just to get, give you guys a, a bit, a more clear breakdown of like where, what my position sizing is. Cause that's, in my opinion, is pretty important in crypto space. Um, and the rune's like another bag I picked up from a friend that told me about it. But it's been getting hacked, <laughs> like, so much uh, in the last uh, two months. I wouldn't say hacked. You, know, I, you could say hacked, but uh, I guess the right term to say it is exploited. So people found a way to mess with the smart contracts and steal money, basically, from the ecosystem. So that sucks. But yeah, in general, that's, like, what I'm holding in terms of projects. If you guys want me to dive into certain projects a little bit more and kind of say like why I'm holding them, that would be cool. Uh, just let me know in the comments, right? Or right, let me know in the Discord in the uh, suggestions and feedback channel. Um, it helps me out, lets me know like what you guys want to see. Uh, but to kind of summarize like my biggest holdings and the ones that I think you should currently pay attention to right now, it would be FTM um, is the main one. And because of uh, Danny, I think his projects, uh, Spell, Ice, and Time, are good uh, ones to look at right now. Time is actually at a, like a low. Let's see. All right, so one of the things about Time is like right now it's at like a, a low. It's 73% down from its like all time high. So right now, oh, it's market cap. So let's look at price. All right, so it's at an all time not like an all time low, but it's a lot lower than like it's highs. And all the own forks are just because like the narrative is kind of switching to different things in the crypto ecosystem. So that's why uh, I think this one, Phantom, are like the two big plays to kind of look out for right now. And then LQDR has just been popping off. So everything in the Phantom ecosystem has been like doing really hot. And Phantom is my biggest holding. It's my favorite L1. Um, so in terms of layer ones, they're like alternatives to like Ethereum. And between Phantom, AVAX, and the other L1s, I think Phantom just has the best projects on it um, and it has the best community behind it. And it's got a good narrative for it going. Right now, I, I definitely think it's overheated. Um, so getting in like now wouldn't have been like, the best idea but as you can see the volume is spiking right that's like one of the indicators i use to know if like the influx in price is like normal or not if like the volume was this low and the price was going up then it's more safe right but if you see like a high spike in volume that compared to like average right that's usually a good time to consider dollar cost averaging out right and that just means like taking chunks of your money out See, because every time like the volume spikes higher than normal, I guess not right here though, right? Usually when it spikes higher than normal, you should consider dollar cost averaging out. And those are ways that like 
what I look at. Uh, I'm not a crypto pro or expert or anything, but I kind of just want to share what I'm thinking about. Uh, learn from your, your comments. Uh, build out the crypto community uh, for Goon Squad. I'll put a link in the YouTube thing below. But other than that, you know, let me know what you guys want to see. Um, hopefully, this video gives you some ideas or some projects to kind of go explore and go down the rabbit hole. So, see you guys around.